20 minutes. I thought I was told I could go three hours and go to skip dinner. <laughs> well, welcome to San Francisco, those of you who are not here. I'm going to talk about cities like San Francisco, but we're going to start in, in Ann Arbor. Uh, I work at Ford, I worked at Ford for about uh, 24 years now, uh, 20 years I've spent in Michigan. I used to live very close to Ann Arbor, so I know Ann Arbor very well. And, and now I work in our Palo Alto office and I have a small uh, AI machine learning group that we work with. And we work with uh, Vantic on, on the machine learning side of the thing in, in, in this project. So, so with that, I'm going to start. Uh, so City One is, is our uh, mobility platform. On October 2nd, uh, uh, Ford announced uh, five major uh, services uh, with City of Ann Arbor. We actually have five partners uh, related to City of Ann Arbor. It's the Ann Arbor City itself, the University of Michigan, which is in Ann Arbor, we have the Downtown Development Authority. We have the Transit Authority, which controls Transit and Spark, right? Besides Vantec and Ford and everything. And, and we, when I said we announced five services, you may think I'm not counting here, are only four. The fifth one is what we're going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about these four uh, at all. So, <clears throat> so Ford is making a very strong commitment in uh, mobility uh, itself, uh, taking people and goods from place A to place B safely, soundly, as intended. And, and we are creating this uh, comprehensive uh, city planning platform that has uh, things like parking, uh, uh, commuters, uh, transit, uh, kind of livability, micro-mobility, uh, the first mile, the last mile, uh, and, and safety and security. I won't speak to de details about this today. Again, I have only 20 minutes. But uh, if you go and search any of this, uh, we have made those announcements uh, on October 2nd. And there is a lot of stuff in uh, public arena on that, right? So, so let's talk about uh, the three-step system in the city platform, right? So. So we're going to really briefly talk about what we are trying to do uh, in this platform. So we want to clearly visualize the data. And where is the data coming from? The data is coming from a lot of different places. And in, in this project, it's really coming from the Vantic systems, right? Based on that data, uh, safety insights or crash or congestion or something like that for a bigger intersection, uh, you can do that, and, and you can actually identify hotspots. Uh, this is kind of straightforward. Once you do that, then you can actually simulate solution. If you collect this history, you collect the seasonality, you collect the special events that happen. There is a University of Michigan football game there. You know, Ann Arbor downtown gets crazy. Uh, you know, the big house, which is the stadium of University of Michigan, holds about 118,000 people. It's the largest stadium, uh, both professionally and uh, uh, amateur or university level. And, and there is a lot of fan base. It's always sold out, right? So, so if you want to simulate what if scenarios, uh, you can't really simulate without the real data and how the data changes and then everything else, this era of big data, machine learning, and everything else, you need to study that, and that's one thing, right? But most of the time, when people talk about travel, traffic, they're really talking about these big streets that get a lot of attention. But really, the, what keeps a city running and functioning are the alleyways. And, and that's the project we are focusing on. That's the fifth thing, right? Alleyways are not typically patrolled by police because they're busy <laughs> where most of the people are. 
however, all the supply chain that happens to all the businesses is typically through these alleyways that are behind a lot of businesses, right? There is a lot of parking lots, people traffic who don't want to you know, walk on these busy streets are taking alleyways uh, to travel, right? So we're going to talk about alley insights here, right? And, and particularly, we're going to talk about uh, goods and delivery, uh, a public two-way. And, and as you can see in this picture, uh, this alley is blocked. There is a bread delivery truck uh, coming towards us out of the screen. And, and if you can see there, there is a wrong direction sign, a red sign there. And it's been blocked by this other two trucks that are probably parked, probably picking up something. Um, so I hope that driver has a, a lot of coffee to drink because he's not going anywhere. Can't really back out of the alley. It's a one-way alley, right? So, so how do you manage this? How do you solve the problem uh, uh, of alleys, right? So, so here is that alley that, that you can actually see. Um, if you see there is a parking structure, which is the bigger one, and, and behind the parking structure is this alley. And, and this alley could get congested. Uh, uh, the garbage gets uh, picked up uh, through this alleyway. Uh, people actually um, uh, uh, get, if they get blocked, then city has to pay overtime. You know, the garbage truck is sitting there, uh, and they can't pick garbage anywhere else. Uh, there are really health implications also uh, for the restaurant site. Right? Uh, if this alleyway is congested, the garbage is not picked up, and if the alleyway is unhealthy, that can be really unhealthy for the stuff that goes in and out of the restaurant from behind. Uh, it, it, it is also and headache because it's it's not used 24 by 7 as the thorough streets and and main streets. Um, so how do you how do you put a policy in there and how do you basically enforce that policy is a big issue. And for the residents that live around there, uh, noise is an issue, right? Because uh, some of these garbage trucks are coming in early in the morning. Uh, if the restaurants are open late in the night and the students are around, they're partying. Uh, so there is, there is that issue for the residents uh, around the area. So, so that is the problem that we are trying to solve. And, and like I said initially, we first need to look at this problem objectively. I'm a, coming from machine learning background, I want the data, right? I want to know. Uh, what is the reality on the ground? And the only way to check the reality on the ground is, is really look at the physical reality. And, and we are doing that. Uh, we have installed, uh, along with uh, uh, partners, um, cameras in this alley. Uh, five cameras cover this alley. And then we need a an, an platform on the edge. This is what uh, Vantech is providing, right? So we want to have the sensors, and we, have, we need to look at the alley, get the video. And if we send this video, which is uh, 30 frames seconds per second minimum, to a cloud, we will be clogged. There are other issues with city of Ann Arbor. They don't want that video to go and create PII issues. So what we want to do is we want to analyze what's happening in the alley on the edge and just transport that action. Like person A is moved from here. There are cars that are parked. There is a garbage truck that's coming in, uh, and, and so on and so forth. And all that other analytics would be done in cloud without actually identifying who that person is or having name plates of the cars or anything else. All we are doing is getting that generic information up in the cloud. And once you have that, then you could have a digital twin of the alley. And, and that digital twin can serve as an engine. So now you do what if this happens, right? We're going to show you some of this, right? 
So, so much of this work is kind of new. Uh, we are using uh, digital twin <coughs> for both real-time views and, and historical playback and, and simulation, right? So if you're doing real-time views, that means the Vantix system that's working on the edge should be able to identify what's happening uh, using all five cameras, stitch them together, timestamp them, and, and put it back up. Thankfully, the cars are not going at 200 miles an hour yet, right? So even though we are collecting data, maybe 30, 60 frames per second, you don't have to uh, really do analysis of each frame, but which frames do you analyze, right? Which frames you don't analyze? There are a lot of questions, and that's why this is a research project, right? Uh, so <clears throat> it, has, it has really worked well so far, right? So one of the things uh, that you need to do if you really want to do the analysis is you need to figure out uh, what objects are in the alley. And if you know AI and machine learning, that itself takes a lot of time, right? So if you use standard data that's out there, ImageNet, Coco, you name it, right? That standard data is not taken from this bird's eye view almost uh, that we actually take, and it's very, very difficult, right? So we have to create this data. We have to augment it. Uh, you know, we've created this in uh, uh, Unreal or Unity. We've created this um, in CAD models. We have, we have actually captured frames and created the data from there to train these AI models. And then we have to deploy these AI models on the edge. And all the system has to be active. If the system goes down, then we have nothing, right? So, so that's also an issue, right? So, so this is what we have been doing. And, and here is, is uh, a bunch of things uh, that, that you see, right? So, so now we are getting to the heart of this uh, system capabilities and benefits to the city. Because if the city has to get this knowledge, they can put one person, two person for part of the things, which we call sampling, right, in data science. But they can't get this data for the whole year. They can't figure out oh, if there is a foot of snow in this alley, what happens, right? Uh, so things like that and the real-time events are, are really, really important, okay? So, so what, what we are trying to do is, is we are trying to use, again, the Vantic platform and architecture to do this uh, analysis on the edge and, and upload it on, onto the cloud and then view it, right? So here on the left, you see map view, right? So on this map view, you are actually uh, seeing more uh, objects uh, than it's kind of visible in that alley, uh, alleyway that, that you see. There are actually, um, uh, few trucks and few cars, right? So, so if you see, there are two cars, which are those green arrows underneath that awning that are parked. That truck that looks like one truck, the blue arrow, is uh, is really uh, two arrows. There are some pedestrians there that that we are not seeing. And actually, what uh, you are seeing around here on the right hand side is the garbage bin, and you're going to see. This garbage bin is on rollers, and, and people actually are going to move that uh, out of that place because it's on rollers, right? So here is uh, the digital twin capability, right? So you, you have a digital twin, and now you're looking uh, at, at what's happening, right? So we want to have the real-time event notification. Uh, if the alley is blocked, we want to know. Uh, we, we want to know the patterns, uh, how, the, uh, how, the, how the people and goods move in the alley, right? So this is the simulation in the digital twin. Now you're going to see that garbage uh, can open up. Uh, uh, you would probably see uh, eventually a truck roll through. Um, so you're going to see a truck rolling through on the left. That is real time. The right hand side is a little bit choppy. And, and we did do this in real time, 
and also there are the view is different right so the camera view we are seeing one camera view whereas in he, in the digital twin you are almost trying to see as much as alley as possible so as the truck moves ahead uh, you're going to see what happens right so so you you did see that uh, driver has to get out move that garbage can out of the way and you will see the similar thing happening in the digital twin uh, except we are not actually showing the garbage can right and and you see the lag right now in real time uh, because of all the analysis that has to take on the edge then that analysis go to the cloud in the cloud they have to figure out what's happening and then they have to render the digital twin so so that's the project uh, what we plan to do is now we plan to collect maybe years worth of data so we get all seasons all events so at least years worth of data and then we can start deriving some patterns even the data that we have collected so far we have gotten patterns for maybe you know august september october and november right uh, uh, you know the fall weather uh, start of the school season so we might get a uh, number of people changing uh, in and out um, uh, but once we get that then the next thing is is to develop policies do some analysis and help the cities manage this alleys right a lot of cities that are coming to us uh, they, after we have made this public and they really want to do this right uh, this is the first bay area pitch uh, that we have done uh, publicly uh, anywhere um, but we are trying to uh, get to that analysis but the key thing is is this if if we don't have the right data from that physical system through the iot system to the machine learning then everything else is garbage in garbage out right so the the success of this project is really dependent on that edge once we have this data there are standard methods that people can use right so that's that's all i have thank you bye then